When we die and our existence comes to an end, yeah, then whether I'm a Muslim or non-Muslim, whether I'm an atheist or agnostic, you know, it wouldn't really matter because if you are just matter and all of that comes to an end one day, that's the end of it, right? But then if, we, if there was a flip side and there was really a life after death and there were really angels and there was hell and heaven and there was God Almighty, then the question would be, how have you prepared for that day, for that event? You know? What would you say then? A gym? Yeah. Yeah? They have to provide for them internet? Yeah. And TV? PlayStation. A PlayStation? Wow. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I will tell you, that, that's, this is happening. I'm not talking about somewhere, I'm talking about Europe. Well, they all get and because of that, <laughs> Because there, I think that the, the, the life sentence is around maybe 20 or 25 years, something like that. So he, he will go to jail, he will train himself, he will make bodybuild, etc. He will come out stronger after 20 years or whatever. So, so this guy, who is paying for this? The taxpayer. Meaning, the very same people who are with their parents and the, the loved ones of the victims, those are the very same ones who are paying for the pleasure life that this guy, even in head, I don't know if that's true, I need to, ver to verify, that, that even he's entitled to ask for prostitute, for example, or what you call it, uh, uh, you know, twice or pleasure. something, uh, you know, for, because they said he's a, he's a human being, he, did, he has lost whatever. So he, he is entitled to get an escort, for example, once or twice a week, etc., and paid, paid for that. That's not the problem. There is, oh, there's more than that. Even a few years ago, few years ago yeah. that he sued the jail he sued like he even have all of this he sued them why he sued them they said because they, they served them with cold coffee they brought him cold coffee in the morning Crazy. yeah and he won the case he was wow. compensated with 18,000 euros for serving him cold coffee while in jail while in jail they could have given him a microwave no 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 he said no he prefer he prefer fresh coffee oh cappuccino okay. yeah, he prefer fresh coffee okay. and because the guard that day he brought him the cold coffee he sued it and you know that you know he felt you know bad because he was served cold coffee he went and sued the the, the court and then they admit yeah we, it was a, a mistake whatever and then the court you know judged for him to get eighteen thousand euros who's paying this again the people, the people. Yeah. like i could imagine my son or my daughter being killed by this criminal by this comeback mm -hmm. and then i'm paying the tax for the government and my tax they will use this to pay this comeback to serve him coffee not adding to this to even i mean for, basically it's a for not travesty of the justice you know? so the question is to you yeah. is this just no okay now where is the absolute justice if it's not on earth yeah, but that, that, but where is like the proof of that? The proof that we are born, mm -hmm. we are born in our nature, any client to believe in absolute justice. We're born with this. So since we're born with this, and if it's not there, it is somewhere. Where is it? And all of us eventually are going to die. Some people are going to be killed by some criminals, etc. How am I going to find the justice if I'm being killed, oppressed by someone? Okay? So that's why there is an afterlife and affirmed in the Quran if you read the Quran you'll find the Quran talking about this as well if you see the Quran it's all of it that the Quran has so you know it has many important messages including that the Quran as well talks about certain things it's only proven recently certain things only proven by science recently all these things how the Quran will say an illiterate man lived 1400 years ago talking about all of these details that shows that this book, it doesn't come from him and he never attributed the book to him. Because we know, if I author something, I will make the credit for myself. Why need to give the credit for someone else, including God, for example, yeah? No, you don't find an author or someone did a, did a good, for example, complicated, you know, work, etc. And then we'll say, this is from God, this is for God. No, he will say, yeah, I have done it, I did this research, I have done this. And then they will write it, all of it in the essay. My point is, so this one and even this, this book, which has all these sophisticated information and all these proven to be truth, all these prophecies that he told us, not just only science, prophecies, yeah. things that will happen and it happened. 
He told us, he told us, peace be upon him, that about, for example, the defeat of the Romans, and after a few years they're gonna be, they're gonna be the victorious against the Persian. And the time where the Muslims, there were only few little amount of people, only few people, bunch of people in Mecca, and yet. People say, what's this going to happen? We know if there is a whole empire collapse, that the, that the Roman Empire kind of collapsed in front of the Persian Empire. Collapsed, the whole army was destroyed. It's impossible for them to wake up for another hundred years. And yet Allah says in a few years time, and within seven years, then Allah Azza wa made the victory for them. So how is these prophecies that the Prophet peace be upon him saying these things? And as well, since these prophecies, all of them came to be true. And all of these facts in the Quran came to be true. That means this book, it doesn't come from someone except the one who knows. The one who is beyond this universe. The one who knows, the one who is the just one. We're going to be established, who is going to be established justice. And that is the proof of the afterlife. Does it make sense to you? It does, yeah. We've answered question. Okay. Yeah. So now, also for you, you know, as an agnostic, I mean, what, what is your understanding about God? Because you must have reflected on it. Yeah. Um, now you know. I don't know. Like, don't if, know. I, if I were to ask you, let's say, where did the universe come from? What would you say? I would say the Big Bang. Yeah, but the Big Bang is in effect, it's not the cause. See what I mean? So, you know, everything, yeah. everything that begins to exist must have a cause to bring that into existence. The Big Bang is an effect, and I'm not saying that it's even today it's like the most you know accepted theory of how but it doesn't explain where did that come from because the Big Bang itself you know talks about things about gases, about uh, the singularity and all these things. But the question still remains where did that come from? You see what I mean? So what is I mean, can you can you imagine something coming from nothing? Because nothing in reality, you know, if you think about it. It doesn't exist. If I asked you what's in my hand, yes, and I say nothing, you wouldn't expect anything, isn't it? Because nothing means absence of everything. Yeah. So the only other alternative would be that there must be something which caused it. Yeah, something or someone. And we cannot believe that the universe is eternal either. Because we know for a fact that the scientists themselves, based on the uh, you know the redshift and so on, explain the cosmologists explain that the universe is something like 13.8 billion years old, which means it must have a beginning. So again, it began to exist at some point. So we have to come to the conclusion that there must be uh, someone who brought this into existence. And if we go and understand that this entity must have, you know, otherwise you'll have a problem with who created that entity, who brought this into existence. And then you'll it's called an infinite regress. That means you can, it's a never ending thing. And then in such a thing, it would, wouldn't exist either. So we know that this entity must be eternal, must be self-sufficient, must be able to create, have a will to create, to bring all this into existence. And that is where we as Muslims and also other religions believe that God has brought this universe into existence. Okay, so we can't just say that one day that all of this, we know for a fact that one day we all are going to die, right? Whether you believe in God or you don't. This is a fact which no one can deny. Not even the atheists can deny that. But the question is this. If all of us, you know, not if, when we die and our existence comes to an end, yeah, then whether I'm a Muslim or non-Muslim, whether I'm an atheist or agnostic, you know, it wouldn't really matter because if you are just matter and all of that comes to an end one day, that's the end of it, right? But then if, we, if there was a flip side and there was really a life after death and there were really angels and there was hell and heaven and there was God Almighty, then the question would be, how have you prepared for that day, for that event, you know? What would you say then? Would you like a copy of the Quran? Yes. Oh, you got one? Yeah. What about so, you? you? Do you have a copy? I have one. I have one. Okay. okay. You're going to read it? Yeah, no, but she's already... Translation. Inshallah. But, but, is that with the translation? Yeah, that is English. This is the translation that's only. English, yeah. That's only the translation. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But you yourself, I mean, now you know that where you belong now, you know that you belong to Islam. Now you know this. Yeah, I, I already know that, but I just... 
But like, there's something where yeah. I'm not like I could be praying, but I don't. I don't have that strong faith. So you should start, sister. Stop praying. Yeah. Now you should start. You know. You know. Make your make your uh, your your could say connection with, with Allah. At the end of the day. So it's important for you to start your to do what you can in order to get closer to Allah. At the end of the day, we live once, sister. And you never know when we're gonna die. But at least, if we live once, we have to do it in the right in the way that God told us. I'm not expecting you to change everything in one in one day, but at least make sure that you rectify your relation with Allah first. That by being close to Allah and by doing what you can to please Allah the firstly by the, the past daily prayer, the past in the month of Ramadan, making sure that you do that, at least in the beginning. And of course there are other things as well, abstaining from all you know, things which is haram and Islam and to do the right things. So that's how it is. And be be proud of your Islamic identity. And that's something which is important because many of us many of us actually because of the because we you know many of the brothers and sisters who lived in, in the West etc that they might kind of lost their identity, lost their Islamic identity. Yeah. That's why we are urging to say go back to you your Islamic identity, where you belong. You belong to Islam. And as well, we are there to help you, to assist you. If you need any help or we need any, for example, if you have any question, we're going we're gonna to help you, inshallah ta'ala. So, and uh, at least, inshallah, now, now you know where you belong. Yeah? Yeah. Inshallah ta'ala. Well, so, thank you for your time. No problem, inshallah ta'ala. And inshallah ta'ala, let me get you something. Uh, one second, inshallah, get you something from the table. Uh, if you, okay, inshallah, jazakallah khair. You could come with me, inshallah ta'ala, give you something from the table, inshallah.